By the late 1920s, the automobile reigned supreme in Dundas. King Street was home to multiple car dealerships, repair stations and garages. Gasoline pumps emerged from the sidewalks and rows of vehicles lined the curbs. The decade had been witness to a series of major transformations in the valley town, changes designed to carry Dundas forward into the modern age of the automobile. The town had plenty of time to get used to the horseless carriage. The first locally owned automobile was a single-cylinder Rambler runabout, purchased in 1903 by Mr. Charles Spaulding. It was ten years later, in 1913, that the town's first dealership was opened, by Martin and Herman Jerome. The Jerome brothers would go on to dominate auto sales in town for over two decades. It was their Ford dealership which first brought the Model T to Dundas. By the end of the First World War, the local automobile trade was flourishing. With more and more drivers on the road, the town could no longer afford to overlook the safety and comfort of motorists. The Dundas Star of the 1920s reports automobile accidents on a weekly basis. Vehicles were regularly smashing into telephone poles, becoming lodged on railroad tracks, or flying into ditches. The roads in Dundas remained unpaved until 1920, and without marked lanes or regular maintenance, they were a hazard in themselves. Some residential streets were so antiquated that they defied the attempts of motorists to navigate them at all. By 1920, plans were underway to fix the situation. The first priority was the paving of Main and King Streets. The operation was combined with the installation of a new sewage system, meaning that large stretches of construction blocked portions of the road for months. The complaints of taxpayers kept the wages of workmen low, and the town found it difficult to attract men willing to do the work. The project dragged on with many delays. The mutterings of indignation over the prolonged unfitness of Main and King Streets for trade by man, horse, or cat are becoming not loud but lurid, it is futile to say that this is the method of laying pavement adopted in Hamilton, New York, or Bullock's Corners. It is patent to every thinking man that the condition of the streets is scandalous and a gross imposition on the public that pays for them. John F. Farmer, Dundas It wasn't until October of 1921 that the project was finally finished the town organized an enormous street dance to celebrate. Soon, other nearby streets were being paved as well, gas tanks and light posts were being installed, and a flurry of vehicle-related bylaws were being passed by town council. It was the first steps toward making Dundas an automobile-friendly town. <laughs> 